actually an orphan, and uh, not by choice. Because <laughs> apparently that would make you a murderer. So. <laughs> but you can't do it's already been done, so. No, I'm kidding. They might be in the room, if so, I'm sorry. <laughs> so, um, I, uh, I recently ran into a, a childhood bully the other day, and uh, I'm told he's going to recover. <laughs> I'm not all about murder. That was an attempt. <laughs> I'm told that 90% of people on the streets suffer from mental health problems of some kind. And because of that, I now drive on the sidewalk. <laughs> well, the last joke makes more sense now, doesn't it? <laughs> I did make that joke because I was homeless last year. And, uh, yeah, thanks, COVID. But um, when you're homeless, there's things people don't tell you, like where they get all their money, for instance. <laughs> but I figured it out. Uh, I got a job, so I'm no longer homeless. Woo. No, I'm kidding. I stole it from a bank. <laughs> I mean, like, it, there's real struggles on the street. Like, most people struggle on where they get their next meal from. And... I'm anorexic, so for me, I struggle with how to get rid of it. Because <laughs> people won't accept food from a homeless person, because if they're giving it away, something's wrong. So, <laughs> no, my big struggle was finding a safe place to sleep at night, because, you know, to the 90%, I was in the midst of them. So, like, I, I look like a victim. I, I look like, I, I acknowledge it, I know. <laughs> I look like a poster child for the Me Too movement. <laughs> or a child from the Me Too movement. <laughs> but we'll never know, so. <laughs> as, a, as victimized as I look, I was actually only ever in one altercation on the street. And I'm an orphan, so I don't know how to say altercation, but I did. So, um, no, there was actually a Mass Ave downtown Indy. There's a pizza place right on the corner of Mass Ave. And I was sitting on the corner begging for coffee and diet pills. And this guy, <laughs> that wasn't a joke, but um, <laughs> this guy came out of the pizza place carrying pizza. And uh, another homeless guy came up to him. He was tall, really long, white beard. And he came up to the guy. He's like, yo, man, I've been hungry for three days. Can I have a bite of that pizza? And the guy was breaking under the pressure. I could see it. So I felt compelled to help this guy, not the homeless guy. So, so I went up to them. I'm like, yo, old school. That was his nickname on the street. He looks at me and he's like, what's up, Hobbit? Mm? That was mine. I'm like, old school. Leave this guy alone. He's got a family. You know, people that actually care about him, we don't have that problem. So uh, let, let, let him get home to his family, get his dinner to his kids. And he has a place to go. We don't. And I'm anorexic, so here's a tip. After three days of hunger, you don't feel the hunger anymore. So just wait eight hours. You're almost there. <laughs> Old school didn't find that funny. And he took a step back, and he's like, Hobbit, I'm going to get you one. And I knew he was going to take a swing at me. So next thing I know, I, I threw a kick, and he went down. And the guy with the pizza box is setting his pizza on the floor, backing away from me. I'm like, okay. Could you imagine what he had to do when he went home to explain what's enough dinner for his family? I was, I was brought by Gandalf and a hobbit. <laughs>